So I'm here at the Concourse of Elegance at Hampton Court and guess who I have found? None other than the MD of Lotus, Matt Windle from Lotus, diehard Lotus fan, you worked at Lotus before, you came back to Lotus, you worked your way up to Lotus and I thought who better than Matt to talk us through your brand new car. Matt, welcome, tell us about this. So in front of you here you have the Amira, which is the car that we just launched in July. This car will be going into production uh, in the first quarter of next year. And this is, yeah, our, our last ice-engined car. Uh, and it's fantastic. I'm really pleased with it. So. Is it a completely new car though? Yes, yeah. So it's, it's based on the same technology as the Evora, the Elise, which is the rib-bonded chassis. But every dimension on the chassis has changed. Uh, it's got wider track. It's the same wheelbase as the Evora, but it's, it's got a wider board, body on it. So yes, it's a completely new car. Is it meant for a new kind of Lotus customer? What we wanted to do with this was keep the Lotus DNA of the dynamics and the driving and, and the aerodynamics and those types of things, but we wanted to make it everyday car, so it's much more usable. So it's got all your mod cons around UX UI in there, and you know your phone will connect to the car. Ingress is improved, so it's class leading ingress. A six foot four person will fit in it comfortably. Oh, so I'll fit then? Yeah, you'll fit in there, no problem. It's, it's fantastic, it, and it's, we've designed it to be driven every day. So it's storage, it's got cup holders, cup holders on the Lotus. Who's heard of that, hey? This is a big step up for Lotus, especially in terms of the interior dynamics. Yeah. Was that from the outset the aim of the car was to really take it up a notch when it came to the inside? Absolutely, and I think it, we've learned from the cars that we've had out there before. You could drive it every day, but you can drive it spirited if you want to, or you can drive it on long distance, so it's comfortable. So we'll do a couple of uh, different chassis settings on it as well. There's two engines. So there's the V6 uh, Toyota engine that we all know and love in, in Lotuses now, but for the first time, we're introducing an AMG i4 engine as well. So there, there's, there's options around engine packages, setups, types of models and things like that. So we're trying to make it appeal to a wide base. Now, I love the fact that obviously you focus on the comfort of the car and it's much better inside. But what I really love about Lotus is, and we've spoken about this, especially with the lease and stuff, is the way that they feel when you're driving them. Is that intact with this? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm lucky. I'm one of the few people that's been able to drive these cars so far. And if you love Lotus Dynamics, you will not be disappointed with this car. I think it's actually a step up, actually, with the wider track. Um, it, it's got... Uh, it's, it's got an e h pass system in it, so it's not it's not electric power steering, but it's an assisted hydraulic system. So you still get that feedback, that engagement with the road that you expect, so it's fantastic. And the interesting thing is you keep in the V6 from before, which means you keep a manual transmission, but I can see just through the window, that one's got an automatic. So for the V6 engine, you have the option of the manual uh, or the auto that's currently in the car on the Evora. Uh, and then for the i4 engine that just comes with a DCT. We've got three transmissions, two engines in this wonderful car, so hopefully it appeals to everybody. Now, you said this is the last ICE car, internal combustion engine car. That makes me a little bit sad. Should I be really gutted about that? I understand, uh, and I really do, but what we will do is, whatever we do going forward, we'll always be focused on the driver. So the driving experience, the, the cockpit is always wrapped around the driver so you feel like you're, you're sitting in the car rather than on the car and um, electric power propulsion as well can give you a really exciting car you know in, in my past I've worked for electric car companies and driving those cars. you can say which company <laughs> in the past I've worked for Tesla uh, and I got to drive the Mark 1 Roadster a lot and that's that's an exciting car it's good fun well, to that drive. was based on the Lotus it was based on the Lotus <laughs> so but and that's what we'll do whatever we do our focus is on the driving experience and I think that will stay core to whatever the car is and it's not just the electric combustion, the electric powertrain, but you're also going to be introducing different types of cars, including maybe something that is not traditionally Lotus. Yeah, we're going into new segments. I mean, it's a, it's a path that a lot of other people have been. But the reason we need to do it is we want to make Lotus sustainable. So, as a lot of people know, Lotus has struggled over the last few years uh, in and out of different ownerships and, and management systems. But now what we want to do is set this up. We're committed to sports cars being designed, manufactured, engineered in the UK. We are setting up uh, manufacturing in China for the lifestyle cars because they're higher volume but all of those that revenue from those cars will be fed back into new products so what we want to do is we want to make a Lotus appeal to everybody wherever they are in their life so you can have a sports car um, or you you know the the SUV is if you've got to take your kids around and, and your dog we'd like you to be in a Lotus doing that because it will still be the, a great experience 
So keep it in the family. Talking of keeping it in the family, you're very much a Lotus family yourself, aren't you? We are, and, and that's. I've been at Lotus on and off now for since '98, so quite a long time. I'm, I was telling you over lunch, I met my wife there as well. So she she recruited not only an engineer but a husband at the same time. So, but it is Lotus is like that. I mean, we've grown. I mean, we've doubled the the resource over the last couple of years, and we've got loads of people coming in from other people. But it's really important that we hold on to that culture, that DNA about what we are, and that's what we're doing. We're we're an open company. We're happy to involve. Uh, the media, we're happy to involve our customers in whatever we're doing. I think that's really important. And you have literally worked your way up through the company yeah. to get the top job. Yeah, I started as an apprentice. So I was an apprentice coach builder and um, at Lotus I've had various jobs from through engineering and then senior management roles and now so I, I'm lucky because I know most of the people that work at Lotus because of the time I've spent there and I think that's really important. That is really important and is it you know is it something that Lotus fans like myself can be rest, can rest assured the fact that there is a Lotus person in charge of Lotus now? Because we've had a few false starts, let's say. I, well, I mean, you need to tell me that. I, I think so. I, I know that people at, at Lotus appreciate the fact that there's been a recruitment inside and I, I've come up through the ranks. Um, and I think the thing I would say is that the management now of Lotus and um, the exec and then the senior managers... They're Lotus people. They get the they get the culture, and it's now if you don't if you don't buy into that culture, if you don't buy into the fact that we're trying to design cars that people want, you don't really fit in. So it's a, it's a different mindset, but it's working very well. We're very busy. Um, we've got a lot of projects going on, but that's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, when have Lotus the investments been massive? I mean, we've invested 100 million in the UK at our facility at Hethel, and we're going to. The factory in uh, in China is going to be about 900 million investment. So there's a lot of money going into Lotus at the moment with the plans that we got in the future. That's pretty awesome. So you are the most Lotus-infused MD of Lotus since the original guys, I guess. I think so. I think uh, and nice, uh, you know, uh, Mike Kimberley. I speak to him quite a lot, and he's. I've got absolute pleasure of bringing him in and showing the cars and talking to him, and just that that Lotus um, just uh, DNA. Uh, wears off on you and stuff like that and the history he's got but I have also bought an Elise so the Elises are finished and uh, I'm sorry to anybody that didn't get one but I have bought an Elise and final edition Elise because that's I've always wanted one now's the time to have it so I will have my personal Elise in the garage that's very reassuring that the MD of Lotus has had to buy his own Elise from the company that's absolutely amazing so I've got to ask you because I have a, a Middle East audience as well what are the plans for the Middle East regarding this car? Well, this car, will, we've designed it as a world car, so it will be going to the Middle East. We've just opened uh, a new showroom in Bahrain with Adamas, and we'll be expanding or, or into, going into the Middle East with the car. So travel restrictions, obviously a little bit are, are conflicting things, but there will be a tour. We'll bring the car over, and we can't wait to meet the people out in the Middle East and our, our potential customers and our existing customers out there. Has it been tested and developed for that region? Yes, yeah. So... We, as I said, it's designed as a world car, so we will be taking cars out there doing hot weather testing as well, dust testing, those types of things. Um, but that's going on over the next six months as we head towards production, so yeah. Now, one of the things I was very excited about when I first heard of the impending arrival of this car was the rumour or maybe the speculation that it might get the Esprit name. Now, I'm a huge Esprit fan, but that didn't happen in the end. Do you think the Esprit name will come back at some point? Couldn't possibly say. <laughs> no, who knows? Who knows? I mean, you're, you're a bigger Esprit fan than I am, and I, I love the Esprit, um, but who knows? It, it's, um, I think if, if we do a car in the future that justifies that nameplate, why not? But you just don't know. I mean, the funny thing is, the cars actually, I mean, we've been looking at this car now for three years. They kind of take on a character of their own, and it's a, it's, a, it's a hard thing. I suppose it's a bit like nurturing your children or something like that. They all have their own character. And uh, this, is, this car here is athletic, it's poised, it's, it's ready to go. And it, but it's everything you need as well. So you could be a daily driver, but you can also take it on the track if you want to. And I think where the Esprit, where the Esprit sat as an icon... We want all of our cars to be icons going for forward, but they may have to be on their own nameplate. I don't know. You need to get James Bond into one of those. That's what you need to do. Okay, here's a suggestion for me. So this is on camera. So if you do it, okay, I, I, I get a commission. You should uh, bring a continuation Esprit model with an electric drivetrain. 
Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> Matt, thanks so much for talking us around this car. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us at this fantastic event. And thanks for bringing this, uh, this car. And thanks for taking charge of Lotus. And I hope to see amazing things happening there. Lovely. Thank you very much. And come see us at Hethel soon. Can't wait. <laughs> so we've just had a great conversation with Matt. This is also my first opportunity to have a look at a real model or real actual car, the new Amira. I have to say, I really like it. I'm kind of biased. I do like Lotuses, but I have to say, it looks beautiful. The proportions are really good. The styling is really nice. It's got the right sort of size, right sort of dimensions, and I love the blue color as well. But the ma main thing about this car, the thing that everybody talks about, is the interior. I had a quick look earlier, but now I'm about to have a proper look and a sit in it as well. So this is literally the first time I'm getting into this and the first time I'm going to sit into it. So I do this typical supercar thing. It's still got a little bit of a sill here, but the sill is much less than it used to be in these cars. They say that I should easily fit into this thing so I'm six foot two with long legs and oh my god I am literally stretched out look at that my legs are stretched out there is plenty of room here car I've got carpet I have got Alcantara I have got leather I've got yellow stitching I've got this aluminium stuff here more Alcantara Oh my God, look at the steering wheel on this thing. This is like a race car steering with the straight ahead notch there and which lines up with the notch at the top of the dashboard as well. I've got a screen here, a proper, proper screen. This is still all uh, upholstered. Now, you may be thinking, why is Shazad getting so excited about the car being upholstered? Surely that's an ordinary thing. Surely everybody has that. There's a little touch button to release the glove box. Look at that. The thing is, Lotuses don't. Lotuses are very basic. And I actually like that about Lotuses, but they've always been very basic almost like there's no upholstery at all but in this case this is fully decked out fully trimmed let me close that remember this is a pre-production car the dashboard has just come on uh, I can see here I've got a full digital dashboard on this thing you've got this one's an automatic it's got the drive modes here you can see the full digital look at this stuff it's going up and down so it's gone into demo mode here so it's showing exactly how the instrumentation is going to look so you've got basically your gears on the right and you've got your speed there you've got your rev your tachometer rev uh, uh, at the top there over here i've got a trip meter which is giving me a graph of information oh it's the it's a fuel economy and then i've got the entertainment system here as well nice little touch here it says a mirror on the vent handles here so just the little handles here that operate the vents it says a mirror on them touch buttons here knobs here there's a nice little uh, rubberized uh, platform there to put your uh, phones and stuff like that the drive mode lever this one's an automatic so they come with a manual and an automatic if you get the v6 if you get the four cylinder which is an amg unit then you get the mercedes automatic on that one look at the starter button look at this look at that that's a little idea uh, that i have to say they're probably borrowed from uh, lamborghini but it's kind of cool that makes an event of getting into a car and starting it that's not just a case of twisting a key and off you go that's like ignition you know ignition at the ready start your engines let's go it's got cup holders as matt was saying it's actually got cup holders a little cubby box actually to put stuff in so that's quite handy the seats are very comfortable i don't know if they're adjustable on this one or are they fixed they look like they might be fixed in this particular case oh no they're not no i'm mistaken they're powered look at that they're powered and they go up and down as well Oh my god, I am getting quite excited about this because this is not the normal fare that you get in a Lotus. You've got a boot release, you've got uh, your parking brake is actually on this side, oddly enough. Actually, that's interesting because in the classic Lotuses, the handbrake would be in this side. So it would be actually in the door sill uh, rather than in the middle uh, because that's a traditional way that they used to do it. And it was a sort of, um, you know, uh, roll off, roll off. So you have to release it and it would go back down again. So now they've put the parking brake on this side. Um, there's a cavity that's just underneath the main console here. There's another shelf over there. So this is actually practical. It's got quite a few storage compartments and places where you can actually put things. Back to the steering wheel. The steering wheel has touch button controls. So it's got this matte finishing. Of course, the iconic Lotus badge with the Colin Chapman initials there. Emira, the flat bottom steering wheel, of course. Alcantara paddle shifts right there on this particular model that's all to hand everything falls very easily to hand uh what's the visibility like out the back not great it's very very small the, the window is very small but the wing mirrors seem to be quite large on this car so actually space the view around it should be quite easy i'm sitting very comfortably honestly i have a lot of room here not only do i have a lot of room but i'm actually very comfortable and i do feel like i'm 
in a place that I want to be. Let's be honest, because that's like a car. A car that appeals to you is a car that you want to sit in, you want to spend a lot of time in it, you want to drive it. That's what this one feels like. And honestly, I cannot wait. And it's interesting that they got a pattern on the automatic, which is drive, neutral, neutral, up and reverse. So that's quite interesting. And a park there. So actually, that must be something else. There's a, oh, that's park for the transmission. And then that's parked, that's the handbrake. And it has a little first edition badge as well, right here in the middle. So that indicates that this is a first edition car. Uh, actually, these are pre-production cars. Not just that, but up here we've got a, a console right at the top as well with more buttons, lights and things like that. That's reminiscent of the Esprit, which actually had a roof-mounted uh, console, which actually had the stereo in the roof. So that's kind of reminiscent, reminiscent of that. I gotta say, feels really comfortable. I really like it. The quality and the refinement and the materials is just a completely different level. Can't wait to give this thing a go. And I gotta sort that out soon, definitely. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to youtube.com forward slash browncarguy. Make sure you follow me on browncarguy.com. Make sure you follow me on all the socials. Search my hashtag, hashtag browncarguy. And if you enjoy my content, you can support it on patreon.com forward slash browncarguy. Cool, I'll catch you in the next video. A big thank you to my top tier patron and sponsor, Jay Williams over Air Technic. Check out their shop for brakes, exhaust, body kits, and of course, suspension. Plus, thanks to Muhammad Ali Omed and Tom Conway Gordon, who are both tier four patrons. And of course, all of these guys were also subscribing to my Patreon account and contributing so much towards helping me to continue creating this content. Join them over at patreon.com forward slash brown car guy. And of course, make sure that you are subscribing, liking and sharing this channel. Hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my videos. And also check out browncarguy.com and follow me on all social media channels. Just search for my hashtag, which of course is hashtag brown car guy.